Tonight's developers made a small fortune buying and selling property over the last 10 years. But now they're going to risk it all as they embark on a mammoth new project which they hope will be the start of a new life for them. There's two new businesses, holiday lets and property development. Oh, you've bitten off a lot. When people walk in here, they are going to be stunned. But just as their dream starts to take shape, the UK plunges into recession and Britain stops spending for the first time in 20 years. You have massive competition. The last two weeks have been pretty tough. I don't think we've got, we've ploughed into it, so the bookings are essential to our survival. In Tavistock, Devon, ex-carpenter Colin Rogers and wife Jenny have done very well out of the rising property market in the last nine years. They've built up a portfolio of eight buy-to-lets across the UK, but now the housing market has turned and they're risking it all for this. A Grade 2 listed Victorian railway station, which has been left to crumble back into the edges of Dartmoor for the past 40 years. It's derelict. It's listed. We don't know what the hidden costs are going to be. You could end up that we have to sell everything we've got. It's a romantic relic from a bygone era. 70 years ago, this whole area was a crisscross of hundreds of miles of track with 168 stations. Most have now closed and, like Tavistock, been left to rack and ruin. For Colin and Jenny, this enormous restoration project also marks the start of a whole new chapter. Tired of the daily grind, they're hoping that once converted, the old railway will provide them with a brand new business they can do together, running a top-end holiday rentals business. The fact that they've never done it before and don't know the area isn't going to take the edge off their aspiration. What our holiday lets will aspire to is to people who will buy a first-class air ticket. Um, they're, they're people that expect luxury, command luxury, and by coming to us, they will get luxury. It's a bit daunting starting out three holiday lets besides developing the station. And we are going in blind, and we can only draw on our own experiences from holidays and on timeshares. I'm not sure this is the most comprehensive research, especially when it's good value family lets that are in demand in Tavistock and not top-end luxury. It's an amazing building. Yeah, 1890. 1890. Uh, it was actually built by the London and South Western right. Railway. How did you hear about it? I found it on the internet. Oh, right. I thought, I've got to buy it. Victorianism floats my boat. So, Jenny, you took some convincing to buy it. Yes, I always do, though. He normally wins me round, as you can see. But this is the largest project we've ever done. How much are you expecting to get for them? The, the three-bed um, peak season is £2,000 a week, and, and the two beds, we round about £1,700 a week. £2,000 a week? You can rent a seven-bedroom farmhouse in France for that. So why w would you rent a terrace here? It's surprising how many people are interested in railways. <gasps> Train spotters <laughs> is what we're really saying, aren't we, here? <laughs> How many weeks of the year do you expect to be renting this out? The people that we've actually spoken to in and around here, they are actually renting them out for 40 weeks of the year. Not a problem. Most people who have holiday lets expect them to be let for about 20 weeks of the year. It's about half of the year. We yeah. always take a winter holiday and yep. lots of our friends do and I don't think it would be a problem. I slightly worry that Colin and Jenny think managing a few buy-to-lets is the same as running and launching a brand new holiday business in a very competitive part of the UK. This is a completely different ballgame. They bought the railway station for £325,000 and have a budget of £290,000, though I'd be amazed if it doesn't cost more. They're estimating an annual revenue of a stratospheric £140,000 a year, which would make them a 22% return on their investment, over three times the industry average. I think you're quite optimistic in, in A, the figure, and B, how much time it's going to be let. You're expecting to get double the amount of weeks let that normal holiday cottages get for double the amount of money. 
Sounds yes. good, doesn't it? <laughs> I think Colin and Jenny have just fallen in love with the old railway station and not thought through how it stacks up as a new business venture. With 150,000 holiday lets in the UK and 8,000 in Devon alone, competition is rife. The station needs to be first class to demand top prices and with its tricky rooms and being overlooked by housing at the back, it's less than ideal. This would have been the platform here yeah. and this is the ticket office. Yes. yes. And this is where they sold the tickets. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I can really see why you bought this and I can also see why you'd fall in love with it. It's just going to appeal to that um, upper end and so that people will come away and be pampered. So they're, they're, the dressing gown hung on the back of the bathroom that we will provide. So you really are going for the absolute top end luxury consumer market, the sort of people who would normally go to a luxury hotel with room service. Exactly, yes. yes. But you're going to have to do it yourself. That doesn't sound luxury to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Colin has himself in mind when he thinks about who's going to stay in his old station and not the average Tavistock holidaymaker. Of the 38,000 holidaymakers visiting Tavistock each year, most are either families or retired, and they'll spend on average £954 a week on a holiday let. But at least their conversion plan makes sense. They're going to split the building into three separate units. One with three bedrooms and two with two bedrooms. So far, so good. But there's a problem with all three properties, especially in the middle property. The lack of any decent living space. Upstairs is OK, where a mezzanine floor will have a good-sized bedroom and bathroom. But downstairs is a real squeeze, with a second bedroom and bathroom, tiny kitchen and cramped living room. To the rear, under the platform canopy, all three lets will have an area with no real use overlooked by the estate next door and without a single view. Just thinking in terms of holiday lets, people are spending time hanging out in the living space. It did occur to me, I mean, it is a bit of a funny space at the back. It doesn't really have a purpose or a point. And I just wondered whether it wouldn't be worth reapplying for planning and, and dividing the section, the canopy, into three sections and making that a great big kitchen living space with a great big vaulted ceilings. It would be an incredible space that you'd use all the time rather than just yeah. have a sort of funny covered yeah. garden. With our unpredictable weather, internal living space is vital for UK holiday accommodation. And I think with a council on site, this old platform would provide a fantastic kitchen diner for each unit, as well as leaving room to get an extra bedroom in the two two-bedroom units. To solve the problem of outside space, I'd go to the front of the station and give each let its own private garden where guests can enjoy the views. It would be a better use of the space yes. and it would make it much more exciting. It's a valid point, the extra, or is creating as much living space as possible. I think perhaps our imaginations and things have run away with us and we're not really focusing as much as we should on what is actually going to be what people want when they're on holiday. I do think it would be worth going back to the conservation officer and seeing how he'd feel about making the platform into internal dwelling space. It's definitely yeah. worth asking the question. Along with good living space, it's bedrooms that generate income in holiday lets. The three-bed layout works, but I think Colin and Jenny are missing another trick with the two beds. They could easily fit another bedroom on the mezzanine floor, giving the accommodation a much more profitable layout. Even with all these ideas together, it's not going to generate Colin and Jenny's fantasy £1,700 a week but I think it will nudge them nearer the £1,300 a week average. And I feel in general that most property developers shoehorn too much into any one space. Yeah. And um, we don't tend to do that. There's a balance of practicality, and especially yeah. for holiday lets, I think having two bedrooms upstairs with a bathroom rather than one bedroom upstairs with a bathroom may well mean it's let more, mm -hmm. which is what you want. Yes. Yeah. 
Worth looking at. There's two new businesses, holiday lets and property development, all yes. at the same time. Yes. Oh. <laughs> You've bitten off a lot. <laughs> What's more, the layout of the station is just one of the problems. I'm not sure they've got their target market right either. If they don't get this spot on, their business could fold before it's even begun. There's always a risk to everything that you do, and the risk in this is that we'd lose everything. In Tavistock, Devon, it's August 2007, and there's no going back for Colin and Jenny Rogers. They have seven short months to transform this derelict railway station into luxury holiday lets before the crucial Easter season. But that's an extremely optimistic schedule. Right, what I've um, noticed in here, Ian, is that the uh, lava and plaster has already gone, so that'll make it easier. We can just kick that down. down. It's not just the ambitious conversion schedule that's at stake. Colin and Jenny are hoping the old railway station will become a brand new business they can run together. Our market research into um, holiday lets has been quite extensive. With the right marketing and with the right touches and the website that we're building, I really do think we're going to succeed at it. The key to a successful holiday business is having the right property in the right location at the right price. 28% of people who choose to holiday in the UK pack their swimming costumes and head to the coast, where they can enjoy a day of lying on the beach, ice creams on the promenade and paddle in the sea. Colin and Jenny's holiday lets are in Tavistock, an old market town which does boast Dartmoor on its doorstep, but it's far from a Devon hotspot. They need to develop the accommodation in such a way that it becomes an attraction in its own right. Converting the platform into more internal living space is crucial for UK holiday accommodation. They'll need to go back to planning, but Colin's unsure. It's not a good idea, because when you come on holiday, you don't actually need the same amount of space as you do at home, and I don't think planning will accept it anyway. Hello, afternoon, Ed. How are you? Good. All right. Good nice to see you. To see you. Come yes. in. Thanks. Well, it's always worth asking because we will consider most things, um, uh, at least give it a first thought. And in, in this instance, I think it's something that we certainly can pursue. I'm really shocked, Ed. I thought you'd have more chance of meeting Jesus Christ on the 925 to Plymouth. Certainly, it's an idea. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. And um, I think it does make good use of this outside space. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Um, we just just finished the, the meeting. Oh, um, well, I'm absolutely gobsmacked um, because the idea that Sarah had, yeah. th they actually think that that's a good idea in principle. Not joking. No, I'm not. It's always worth talking through your ideas with your local conservation officer. Although their primary role is to preserve historic features, that doesn't always mean they won't buy into your plans to save the building. Please tell me you're going to do it. Probably not. But why on earth would you not do it? We don't think that the aesthetics, it will look right. We actually yeah, think it'd be detrimental to the, the station. And the platform. And the budget. And yes, it's going to cost a bit more mm. money, but say you spend another 50,000. It's going to be fantastic living space. You're making tremendous amounts more square footage and making them into completely different houses. But you also pointed out before that there wasn't a lot of outside space. So if we go and fill in the platform, we've only then got the front. Whereas at the back, the sun sets down along there. We can put dividers between the houses. The thing is, that may be outside space. Mm -hmm but you can't actually see the outside from it. You can't see the sky. I can see what you mean from that. We're not saying no completely. What we're saying is no at this moment in time. The reality is you'll probably never do it if you don't do it now. But if you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. I can't make you do it, but I'd do it if I was you. Do you have a very strong picture in your head as to how this is going to end up? Yes. Yes, without... Absolutely clear. Yes. And am I in it? <laughs> no. I'm not, am I? <laughs> the layout is only part of the issue with Colin and Jenny's plans. Colin is fixed on filling the old station with expensive, high-spec designer comforts. 
music systems in the bathroom to control, lighting in the bathroom to control, three different light systems in the house to create an ambience of whatever your mood is. Um, lighting onto the platform where you'll be able to have a barbecue 365 days of the year, regardless of the weather. It's not just the expense, but to me, it seems way off track for the average Tavistock holidaymaker who might want to holiday in an old railway station. Really will be worth it, because I'm not kidding you. I, can, I got the vision to see this finished, and I know that other people haven't got the benefit of that, but I'm not kidding. When people walk in here, they are going to be stunned. If Colin's vision is for holidaymakers who can afford to spend £1,700 a week, I think it's time for a spot of ad hoc market research. We're on one of the most expensive shopping streets in the world. Yeah. And if people can come here and can afford to buy designer clothes and shoes and, and jewellery, surely they can also afford £1,700 a week to come and stay in your holiday lets. Would you agree? Absolutely. Definitely. So this is a kind of clientele you're looking for? Absolutely. Yes. Great, let's chat to them then. Why not? With the battle lines drawn, how much are their potential clients prepared to pay? An old railway station divided into cottages, really top-end spec. No garden, but a little terraced area outside in Devon. And a fantastic view. With you, a fantastic view. More maybe 700 to 1,000 pounds for a week. So I would think... H900. Would you pay £1,700 yes, a week? Yes, I probably would. You would? <laughs> yeah, I probably would, actually. I still think 1700 is slightly steep. 750 750 a week. Yeah. Get away. We were going to put really high-spec electrics in for all the fancy gizmos, the lights, the blinds. I think we just have to totally squash that idea. Actually, exactly the conclusion that I would, I would say that you need to have reached from this. And you can get a fantastic top end finish, mm. but you don't have to have a gold plated floor yeah. to ceiling. So, Colin, has today convinced you that you need to lower your spending in order to get the kind of return you should do on your investments? <laughs> yes and no. Jenny's the yes part on the no, but with consultation, it will probably end up as a unanimous yes. So Jenny's in charge? <laughs> of that issue. <laughs> the word on the street is that no amount of gadgets are going to convince people to pay £1,700 a week for a three-bedroom cottage in Tavistock. And that's not surprising when you see what else you can get for your money in Devon. For £200 a week less than Colin and Jenny want, you can get this four-bedroom manor house that has double their square footage. For just a bit more at £2,000 a week, you can stay at a five-bedroom barn conversion set within 150 acres of land, complete with its own swimming pool. And this mid-terrace three-bed holiday let near Totnes is a similar size as Colin and Jenny's, and it's let out for just under £1,000 a week. In reality, this is the competition they will be up against. The good news is, with so much left to do before opening for Easter, Colin has ditched the gadgets and gizmos. The bad news is they haven't agreed what to charge for letting them out. I've had to compromise with Sarah and Jenny, and so um, we're looking to lower the price from 17 to 15. We've realised that we do need to bring it down to around about a thousand. Well, between seven fifty and a thousand, depending on on the season when it's school holidays and things. Then, in the second year, we've got a clientele. We can then push the price up. Colin is the ultimate optimist in everything and anything. Jenny, being an accountant, will always have a pessimistic view on things. I never really hoped to get seventeen hundred. <laughs> And it's not just the conflict about the rates. Colin and Jenny also seem to be taking their eye off just how much work there is to do on the renovation. I'm meant to be project managing the job, but I'm involved in everyday things. And uh, there's certain carpentry things I, I like to do myself. Broken the bloody glass. 
It's a complicated restoration and needs some serious project management, especially as they face one problem after another. I don't think you're going to get away with uh, as little as what you thought you were. As you can see, I mean, that's just, just falling away. I think you're going to end up doing the majority of the building. You think so? Absolutely. Setbacks like this aren't uncommon on old buildings, but as Jenny is trying to balance the budget, it's the last thing she wants to hear. And we're just talking about the plastering. Right. And we think that probably 80% of it is going to come off. Mm. Mm. And it could well impact upon the budget for how much in? Uh, about six or seven grand, that sort of figure. I think we just have to bite the bullet, yeah. I'll be rattling soon, all these bullets are biting. <laughs> oh, that bit's rotten today, and that bit's rotten, and so I think if we just declare the whole building's rotten, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> and it's not just the old building itself that's causing problems. Today, the joists for the mezzanine floors have arrived, and this is the first major structural job in the build. Hi, John. How's it going? Lots of good, not so good. Coming to a grinding old coal, really, to be honest with you. We don't have the joist hangers for that point there, there, or there. You know, we've just been sent a jigsaw puzzle without a picture. Uh, with half the pieces missing by the looks. Yeah. Stand down. Yeah. That's all we can do. A good day wasted. It could have an effect on the plumber. Electrician was due to come tomorrow it'll end up becoming critical, we'll end up wasting time after time. Colin and Jenny are starting to realise the enormity of the task they've taken on. They've just 14 weeks until the Easter deadline, and this development is gobbling up the cash at high speed. It's another five weeks before the mezzanine is in place, but at least it gives Colin and Jenny the chance to see just how much space they have. That's still big enough for a double bed in each room and the necessary furniture. Yeah. And, so, and the door in there, into the bedroom, another door into the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, Which I think that'll work. Yeah. yeah. Colin and Jenny can finally see just how simple it is to fit two bedrooms in here. But for some reason, they're opting for one en suite. That means guests in the second bedroom will have to run downstairs through the living area to use the bathroom. And I'd like to show them why that's a mistake. Would you be happy to take all your clothes off for me now and put this on? Right at this moment? Yeah. You can go somewhere else. You can go behind, behind the, the wall there. If it was a bit warmer, I would, but not today. Fair enough. I thought I might get all your clothes off then. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, so stick this on. And if you could go up the stairs for me. Right. I'm going to put a towel on. Right, OK, so if we were upstairs in the second bedroom... Yes. ..to go to the bathroom, you'd have to come down the stairs here, round here, say hello to all the people sitting in the sitting hello. room... Hi, Jen. ..and then through here and into the bathroom... ..and then have to go... All the way back, feeling a little embarrassed about the fact you've got practically nothing on, and then back up the stairs to bed, which, quite honestly, in a perfect world, isn't ideal, is it? I'm already quite embarrassed about the fact that I've had to walk through this sitting room. Jenny, are you? Would you be happy with people trancing through with hardly any clothes on? If it was a and b yes, I would be. But as it's family or friends, no, I don't see a problem. We've only just been away this weekend with five of us and we were sat in the lounge in our dressing gowns and underwear reading the Sunday papers, so I don't see it as a problem. <laughs> we don't want everyone to know that, do we? <laughs> in an ideal world, it, it isn't a good situation. However, what else could you do? Well, I have got one possible solution. It's so incredibly easy, it would be crazy not to do it. They simply need to change the position of the door to the bathroom so that it can be used by both bedrooms. I personally think that uh, someone who's staying in a holiday let would rather all the bedrooms had a bathroom on the same floor than one bedroom had to go downstairs to a bathroom and the other bedroom had an ensuite. I, 
I think in the scheme of inconvenience, that's a lesser one. Mm. Perhaps we should look at it again. It's not a drastic change, is it? No, I? no, it's not, no. I, I, I'll certainly uh, sit down and consider that. Mm. I think we should. The practicalities of doing it are, are totally minimal. This time, I'm hoping common sense will prevail. Bathroom, the bedroom and ensuite, staying as they are. The second bedroom will use the bathroom downstairs, and it's really not an issue. If it's in conflict with Sarah, well, you know, it's in conflict with Sarah. Colin and Jenny Rogers have done very well out of the rising property market in the last few years. But now they're gambling everything on creating a new life for themselves in Devon. They've given up the day jobs to run a new holiday business by converting a derelict old railway station. It needs to be open in time for the crucial Easter season, but it's January 2008. Economic growth has stalled, and holidays are fast becoming a casualty of people's financial uncertainty. It can be daunting when you think, oh, we've only got 1,000 left here and 500 left there, and you can't just suddenly start and say, well, that's it, we can't finish the bill. With so much money riding on this build, Colin and Jenny need to make sure they spend it in the right places. So it's good news that Colin's ditched his plans for a designer finish. But it's bad news that he's still furnishing the cottages as though it was his own home, and not thinking how practical and hard-wearing these rentals really need to be. Right, at 10.43 now, Victoria Mahoney dropped leaf work table with freeze straw, starting to be at 50 pounds, 55 anywhere. At £130, if you're all sure, at 130 So how much are you planning on spending on the furniture for these units? We're anticipating, uh, on all three, £30,000. £30,000 on just the furniture? Yes. That's but... a very nice furniture. <laughs> now, I've got a funny feeling that this is a bit of a flight of fancy because you like buying antiques and, and oh, uh, absolutely. collecting them. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that. And th I look at that and I just think, one big person resting their bottom on that and it's going to break. It's survived 117 years. Amazing, isn't it? But it hasn't been in a holiday lap, though. I have to admit, if they were my holiday cottages, I'd have a clean, contemporary look, which is probably what people will expect, with the odd, lovely antique thrown in. But I suspect I'm not going to shift you on this one, am I? Probably no. not. You're a long way <laughs> down your paths. <laughs> How is your budget at the moment? Are you on budget? We're going to remortgage our own house just in case. I don't want to get a little bit near the end and find we've got a bit of a hole. You've got a lot at stake here. Yes. This isn't spare cash you had floating around and you having a bit of a laugh with it. This is all your money, isn't it? Isn't Definitely. It? What they should be doing is exploiting the unique aspects of the railway to make it an attraction in its own right. This B&B in West Sussex is also a converted station and the whole design is a celebration of the building's heritage. The owners have worked hard to let the original features shine through and the bedrooms are full of their own charm. This is a great example of what Colin and Jenny should be aiming to achieve and it could save them a fortune. Back in Tavistock, the crucial Easter deadline comes and goes. And with critical potential revenue down the drain and a budget that's shot to pieces, things are starting to cost them dearly. We've decided to sell the house in Southampton that we've been in for nearly 13 years now because we do need to get as much as possible out of it as the budget here has really gone out the window. And to finish it, the only way to do it is to sell the house. It is a bit of a shock and I don't think it's fully dawned on me yet what we've done and what we've left behind. With the schedule and budget totally out of control, it's now a race to finish in time for the summer season. The injection of cash from the sale of the house allows Colin to double his workforce and get the build moving full steam ahead. Morning, chaps. How are we? All right? Well done, Colin. We've got um, new blood on board. Um, I'm sure that we're going to pick things up ra rather rapidly. How's it going? Of course. Um, not too bad. I'm just cut out the rotten bit on the end. You've got everything that you need. 
Whilst Colin is busy trying to meet their new deadline, Jenny is getting to grips with launching their holiday business. I think we just went into it and thought that would be a good idea. And then once you've committed yourself, you've got to go the full mile, haven't you? So it's not just all buying all the, the um, goods to go inside. It's the advertising. It's getting your website right. It's talking to the tourist boards. Um, there's just so much involved. And you've got health and safety. You've got the fire regulations to think of. So it just does go on. Colin and Jenny now have no family home and a massive £600,000 debt. They've done their sums based on a wildly ambitious dream of full occupancy as soon as they open, but their marketing consists of a small amount of local advertising and a website. It's not what you would call a contemporary um, no, website. No, it's, it's colourful and it's balanced because you've got the, the logos down the side or the headings down the side, pictures down the right-hand side. They are restricted because they have no finished building to photograph, but their website also feels both dated and difficult to navigate. And so it proves. A whole month passes before they hear a peep. I didn't tell you, did I? We've no. got our first booking today. Really? Did they book online? online? Yeah. You're not going to like the price. It's £900 that week. Flipping heck. But we, we'd agreed the prices. I know, but nothing was moving, so I dropped them. And Sarah proved that we really wouldn't be able to get those such high prices. And when it's full up, then you'll say, well, you were right, Jen. <clears throat> yeah. It's just over half the 1,700 Colin originally wanted. But as another three weeks pass and there are no more bookings, I think they need a big review of how they're marketing the old railway station. And I know that you designed and built your own website, but I feel that there's quite a lot of room for improvement with that website. It's got to be absolutely cutting edge and draw people in. So if we click on your site for accommodation, there's a lot of text and a lot of, of information that, that on first glance you think, crack, if I've got to read all that to find out what exactly is going on. And now over to my mock-up. Above all, a good website should be striking to look at and easy to navigate. So I've gone for a much bolder design and a lot less text. Accommodation on this new site, you immediately have a graphic. Obviously, it costs having a graphic, mm -hmm. but it's worth investing in it. But you've also got the downside of the fact that you don't have any photographs of what they're likely to come and stay in. So, so a 3D graphic is the very best way that you can help them envisage what they're likely to be staying in. What do you think of it? It's very different. That's very contemporary, mm, which extremely. we deliberately avoided. We didn't, didn't think it would go with the, the style of the station, the age yeah. of the station. I mean, I would have thought that the age group and the type of people you're trying to appeal to with your holiday cottages would be much more likely to like a contemporary website than, than one that's a, a little bit sort of behind the times. Mm. Now, obviously, a website <coughs> like this does cost. Mm. It costs to get the graphics and to get the website designed and built. You're talking probably about three or four thousand pounds. But three or four thousand pounds very well spent. Mm. The budget's gone out the window anyway, so I don't think we've got a choice, have we? No. With that, <coughs> we'll be able to put the prices back up. Oh, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so not what I meant. Getting the website right is only half the battle. I still think they're shooting themselves in the foot by not getting in holiday letting agents to help during the first couple of years. So you've got one booking. Mm. You have massive competition. Mm. 8,000 holiday cottages in Devon and 20,000 in the southwest of England. I think you really need to get an agent. They charge anything between 23 and 27%. Plus there's set-up fees, it's not a cheap thing to go down. Surely you're better off with 75% of a whole load than 0% of nothing. We thought if we couldn't let it ourselves in the summer, then we shouldn't be doing it. This is a complete false economy. Colin and Jenny don't know the area, have never run a holiday business before, and the UK is on the brink of a recession. Agents would give them access to a huge database and more marketing muscle. With no proper marketing, they'll be lucky to get any bookings and struggle to service the four grand a month in mortgage payments. 
There's just six weeks until the summer holidays are here, but there's a huge amount left to do. All the fixtures and fittings, six bathrooms, three kitchens, and then there's decorating and furnishing all three units. The pressure of starting this new business is starting to show. I would think probably the last two weeks have been pretty tough. And uh, to overcome uh, certain issues from the budget to staffing and getting things done. Um, but I think that we're, we're over that now. And, um, Do you? <laughs> I yeah, still I think it's really stressful. It is stressful because it's just relentless, isn't it? It's not, you can't leave it. We can't say, oh, blowed this, I've had enough. As much as we might like to do it, we couldn't dream of You just couldn't leave it. Why would you want to leave it? With mounting debts, Colin and Jenny have no choice but to pull together to try to get it finished. I'm here doing the painting to keep the cost down and plus I'm enjoying being here with all the melee of men and um, getting into it with the enthusiasm. But I hope you're being careful with that, Ben. You were warned, weren't you, that I might... I was warned. I might cut your manhood off with a I'll rusty, off rusty knife. <laughs> Whilst the rest of the bill begins to take off, there's one major area that seems to have been forgotten about, outside space. Colin and Jenny didn't go for the idea of converting the old platform to create more inside living space. Instead, they see it as a special outside feature. The problem is it's covered and overlooked by houses. I've always felt that what each of these holiday lets needs is its own private garden area directly at the front of the station, where guests can enjoy the amazing views that could make this development stand out. But Colin and Jenny have other ideas. See the existing uh, viewing area? What I wish to do is extend that this way to that tree by means of timber decking. I agree they need to take advantage of the headland views, but a large decked area runs the risk of looking like a pub garden and have no privacy. I think there's a solution to get the best of both worlds by creating separate areas for each holiday let at the front of the station. I do believe you've got some valid points mm. and <laughs> of how... <laughs> Many don't. <laughs> but in my big picture... I, you I have a vision. Yeah, That's right. I, I just can't see it yet, but if someone can show me it, then by all means. OK. Each unit's got its own little private area, so there's a garden there, and a separate garden here, and this is a separate garden. So the great advantage with the way they've done it here is you don't have that sense of barricading mm. each unit up. Mm. They've used railway sleepers, and they kind of step down all the way so that you've got this view in this direction. Yeah, and I like the low maintenance. I think that's very good. As you look at the barn, you still have the sense that it's a barn, but when you're sitting here, you don't feel you have to speak to the neighbours on either side. And that's what matters, is you want to have a sense of privacy one way and not the other way. I don't think people are going to use the back areas very much. If it's a sunny day, you don't get any of the benefit of the sun. Mm. Yeah. If it's a cold day and it's raining, you're going to want to be inside. In this climate, in this country, you don't get very many hot, rainy days. Yes, yeah, sure. You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> At the top end of the market, you can get a holiday let that does have a private garden, and so that is one area that somebody may choose not to go to your mm. holiday units. You can imagine, right, you're sat there having a gin and tonic, just sitting there nicely, and someone comes right up close to you and sits down, unraffles the paper and then starts making a comment. How would you feel? Annoyed. <laughs> there we are, that summed it up. <laughs> I think private gardens are one trick that Colin and Jenny really can't afford to miss at this stage in their development. It's the summer of 2008 and five million holidaymakers are about to invade Devon and 44,000 making it to Tavistock. But Colin and Jenny are starting to run out of steam. We're now less than a fortnight to be finished. And at this stage, I expect it to be full of jubilation, elated about things going in, really enjoying it. But quite honestly, I can't wait for it to end. 
this house should have been finished. It was cleaned last week and it's filthy again because people the carpets have been laid, which is great. But the plumber is now testing the central heating system and so everyone says just trying to work around each other and it is getting really, really tiresome and just really stressful because we are up against it time-wise. And getting ready for the main season is only half the problem. It's pretty scary because everything we've got, we've ploughed into it, so we haven't got very much to fall back on. So the bookings are essential to our survival, actually. It's 16 months since Colin and Jenny Rogers first dreamt of creating a new business together in Tavistock. Since they started, the economy has stalled. Lending is starting to dry up and small businesses are feeling it hardest. Their dream rested on restoring a Grade 2 derelict listed railway station that had hit the buffers more than 30 years ago. But my, is it back on track. Its transformation into three holiday cottages is complete. They did miss a trick not exploiting the potential of the old platform, but the once dark waiting rooms and offices are now bright and light. The antiques are perhaps an unnecessary expense in a holiday let, but the warm colours and attention to detail make it a wonderfully comfortable place to stay. All this has come at a price, though. With £160,000 overspend, they now have a mortgage of over £4,000 a month to contend with. They need to get paying guests in fast, now the summer season is here. I've never done so much housework in all my <clears throat> life. It's just much harder than I anticipated. One, two, three, tickets, please. And we're really enjoying our stay here. The kids think it's fantastic. It's excellent because yeah. you don't feel you're hemmed in, uh, but you could sit outside the front of your property, enjoy the fantastic view. Two young children, us two, that's, that's fine, but um, if there was two couples standing, I think it'd be a bit too cramped. If the toilet was just a standalone toilet rather than an ensuite, mm. it would have been a lot better. The months pass by and it's October 2008. Colin and Jenny's railway station has been open for three months through the summer season. But now the guests have gone and it's time to look at the figures and find out if it's all been worth it. You were originally hoping to get £1,700 a week for each of the two beds and £2,000 a week for the three beds. How many have you had of those prices? So the highest rental um, we've received this year was £1,000 per week. For their first year, Colin and Jenny had hoped to average £1,800 a week over the peak period for each of the three holiday cottages. That would be a total of 36 weeks, which would give them a potential income of £64,800. But in reality, they achieved an average of only £1,000 a week over just 14 weeks between the three properties, bringing them an income of just £14,000. That's less than a quarter of what they'd hoped for. So since you've opened, you've been down on occupancy, you've been down on money. Do you think that it's, it's the whole concept of staying in a railway station and, and how these units have ended up that, that puts people off? And, and do you think that they've enjoyed that? I don't think it's the railway station, but because of the, the credit crunch and the weather, and um, we've had to drop our prices like everybody else has. We talked about you using an agent to let this and, and you've always stuck to your guns and said, no, you didn't want to use an agent to let it. Do you think in hindsight now that you wish you had used an agent? Definitely not. Although I really admire their determination, I think it has been a mistake. Colin and Jenny managed £14,000 for the peak season, but successful holiday let agents do know their markets back to front and will earn a return. Well, this really is a little disappointing, I'm afraid. It was overlooked, it's dark, and I think they should use the space in the front more to have a far nicer sitting out area. On the whole, they are beautiful cottages, beautifully presented, but I do think they've overspent. This is lovely. 
They've kept the original arch beams, which gives a lovely feeling of space, makes it lighter. I would say that these properties are of a very good standard and would let very well for high season, and we would achieve a sum of approximately £23,000 after commission. I am really quite confident that we could market these properties successfully 100% in the high season weeks and that should bring in an income of up to 24,000 for the owners. If Colin and Jenny had used an agent, they could have made an extra 10,000 pounds in their first year when cash flow is at a premium. It's now May 2009 and Colin and Jenny have been open for 10 months. They've risked everything, including selling their family home, to create a new venture that they could run together. Is it the Friday you're looking forward to, so the 31st of July? And the work is relentless. OK, take care. Bye. Yes, a booking. Oh, so in 10 months, we've achieved um, 40 bookings, which at the beginning, that would have seemed really minor. But now we've sort of done the 10 months, we're really pleased we've done that. So if we can increase that another 10, 20% next year, we'll be really pleased. I realised I was totally over-optimistic and what with the economic climate as well, that has not been in our favour. Um, however, next year will be total saturation. We can, you know, we can see it, the economy's moving, so the prices will be able to be adjusted back up to my level at a later date. But for Colin and Jenny, it was always about more than just making a profit. It's been a really big move for us, but we've been in love with the station house. And now Tavistock is our home and our life. And I couldn't envisage ever going back to Hampshire. Could you? No. And as the economy grows, so our business will grow. So we're really pleased and got no regrets at all. Next week's amateur developers get caught right in the eye of the storm when the property market collapses. You're looking at £35,000 loss mm. at best. Mm. But it's going to be hard to find a new main contractor when you're halfway through a job. 